Let me know if you can see my screen. Great. So uh, I'll be showing a video to you. I mean, I'm going to be playing this video. Let's have a look at it and we'll be answering few questions and asking questions again against this. Can you hear the audio? Can you hear the audio of this video? Thanks for telling me after two minutes that video was not able audible. So I could uh, let's give it a shot again. Our ability to learn and get better at tasks through experience is part of being human. When we're born, we know almost nothing and can do almost nothing for ourselves. But soon we're learning and becoming more capable every day. But did you know that computers can do the same? Machine learning brings together statistics and computer science to enable computers to learn how to do a given task without being programmed to do so. Just as your brain uses experience to improve at a task, so can computers. Say you need a computer that can tell the difference between a picture of a dog and a picture of a cat. You could begin by feeding it images and telling it, this one's a dog, that one's a cat. A computer program to learn will seek statistical patterns within the data that will enable it to recognize a cat or a dog in the future. It might figure out on its own that cats have shorter noses and that dogs come in a larger variety of sizes and then represent that information numerically, organizing it in space. But crucially, it's the computer, not the programmer that identifies those patterns and establishes the algorithm by which future data will be sorted. One example of a simple yet highly effective algorithm is to find the optimal line separating cats from dogs. When the computer sees a new picture, it checks which side of the line it falls on and then says either cat or dog. But of course, there can be mistakes. The more data the computer receives, the more finely tuned its algorithm becomes and the more accurate it can be in its predictions. Machine learning is already widely applied. It's the technology behind facial recognition, text and speech recognition, spam filters on your inbox, online shopping or viewing recommendations, credit card fraud detection and so much more. At the University of Oxford, machine learning researchers are combining statistics and computer science to build algorithms that can solve more complex problems more efficiently using less computing power. From medical diagnoses to social media, the potential of machine learning to transform our world is truly mind-blowing. Anyone who could, I mean, share any insight like what you got from this video, any particular thing? Anyone? I mean, uh, in case we learn that dogs have shorter noses and uh, the cats have shorter noses and dogs have then larger noses. So any any particular incident that you all learned from the video, I mean, it can be relevant, not relevant to data science or anything. Okay, so anyways, if that, that's not the case, what we can do is we can play a game uh just to start with okay identify the objects that that's what Ankur said so it's about ai okay so i mean it's about the videos was about ai and uh, we are kind of identifying the object so 
I mean, thanks for those answers. I would like to uh, basically basically wrap up those answers and I'll tell you like what they are about, what they are kind of trying to say. So it's more of like uh, we are trying to identify objects using artificial intelligence. So that's yep, we are kind of predicting something. So uh, that's again a use case of machine learning and artificial intelligence. But it's not like yeah, to just you want to say something. I think it was accidental, so I will mute. Okay, so what we are saying is we have a lot of kind of different use cases. So let's say you want to predict something out. You want to, oh, that's nice. I mean, you want to recognize something, you want to predict something, you want to identify something out. So th those things can be done using artificial intelligence. But can you think of like, uh, why artificial intelligence for that? I mean, can't it? Okay, sorry for that. So can't you do it? I mean, uh, without artificial intelligence or is there anything else that you learned in your mathematics, chemistry, physics, maybe your arts class or anything, any, 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 any particular class. So what, what's different about artificial intelligence? What, what is different about data sciences? So that, that's my question. Like, again, the question arises: right, so like, why you people are here? I mean, that's the question again, it's, it's kind of a, uh, round robin that why you people want, want to learn data sciences. So again, the question is there. Any any particular uh, thought ignition after watching the video? So let me help you. I mean, some of you might uh, like to solve few questions or few problems. Is that the case? I mean, anyone who's here who wants to learn data science just to solve questions or maybe some problems that are there. Okay. Honestly, anyone, um, anyone here who wants, wants a hike in their, uh, salary or who wants a good job. That's why they are, they're learning data science. Anyone. Uh, no one. Okay, Krishna. Data science is like grouping, cleaning, and visualizing data. I mean that that's correct. So uh, okay, what we can do is we can we can play a game for now, and uh, we might again have quite the same question or be the same question uh, modified or provided in a different way. So let's let let us go to this website called G dot Quick Draw. I'll also paste the chat link in uh, the link in the chat also. So. Here it is. I hope everyone uh, joined this link. I mean, please please open this link and we can play a uh, game around from, from this particular link. So what, what the game is, uh, you'll get say 10 seconds to draw something. There is, there is six trials. So you will get six tries to draw some draw something in 10 seconds and uh, neural network behind this uh, machine will try to recognize what you're drawing okay or what kind of thing what what kind of stuff you are drawing so you would be asked to draw something and then the neural network will try to recognize if you're if you're drawing it correctly or, or not okay so let me play it for you i mean you, you can play it by yourself also. so it's asking uh, draw while in under 20 seconds uh, I'm not sure how a violin looks like, but yep, I can try. Mm. I see wishbone, or knee, or string bean, or necklace. I see onion, or leaf, or feather, or harp, or cello. I see parachute. I see banana. Okay, I, not, I don't know how. Sorry, to, I couldn't get it. I don't know how to draw a violin. So, anyways, what is this squiggle? Anyone who's know what what is a squiggle? Anyone? Not sure what it is. I mean, uh, should I cheat? If I can, I can squiggle. I can cheat anyways. Oh, squiggle is like a scribble moreover i see paper clip or zigzag or hot dog or hand i see grass or pliers 
let me erase and try again i see peanut or paper clip or hot dog i see banana or long hair sorry no, i couldn't guess it okay peanut i can draw i mean that 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 that, would, that should be easy i see ear or moon oh i know it's peanut yes a dog i mean i see nose or hexagon hand. or shoe or mouse or bird i see parrot or person or camel damn i see nose or mustache or shoe or crocodile or duck i see kangaroo oh i know it's dog okay finally 30 seconds 3 seconds late but i was able to manage it okay i think it's the second last one maybe i see finger or matches oh i know it's hand it was easy oh face let, let us try i see circle or moon oh i know it's that, face that was easy no so i got around maybe maybe it, it is uh, more or like getting two uh, four correct out of six not a bad score anyone here who got six out of six maybe five out of six anyone mm okay navin got 6 uh, out of 6 that's great navin anyone else who got maybe vaishnavi or prithik sort of sovik siddharth anyone vaishnavi got 4 anyways uh, krishna what about you monica mrtanje okay sharul got ha uh, 2 teja got oh 1 6 again mrtanje got 3 that's kind of great no i mean so uh, the question is now again few questions so how does this this you what do you think that this game works or maybe how does it recognizing your drawings on i mean further inquiry how we could program this so that kind of uh, i mean the latest step but how do you how do you think this particular game works anyone how do you think that this particular game works learning from experience okay i got one answer so i'll i'll be writing answers and maybe learning from experience anyone else i mean who got 6 out of 6 ai recognition okay anyone else code ai recognition okay one thing is no more or now the code anyone else data of the pictures is already stored in, and it matches with them okay so now it's more of like uh, you you said there is a pattern that is already there and there is a new pattern which is there and we we trying to find the particular pattern okay it's more of like uh, we are trying to match the pattern is it vaishnavi so would maybe share it as pattern matching okay new nails so this is the last time i would, I would i'm asking anyone else okay great so uh, now the people who say who said recognition or who said pattern matching so i mean recognition is more of like pattern matching again but the question is uh, being a human i'm able to uh, let's say learn this particular thing okay that's a phone phone is kind of square it's a white in color it has two different i mean two kind of black dots uh, at the back and kind of one uh, kind of uh, white and glowing stuff at the front and that's how a phone looks like and I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to register it in my head come up again whenever see the see this stuff i'll say okay this is a phone okay this is a phone even the point is let's say when i see something else which is kind of similar to it let's say this stuff that's a diary that's a diary but now it's kind of white hair black hair and you could you could even what what you could do is you could i mean draw to black dots hair but still what i'm what i'm able to do is i'm going to be able to recognize that that's a that's a diary and not not a phone okay so that's the i mean cognitive human intelligence that i have that is what 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 we call as cognitive human intelligence okay and which is kind of what which humans i mean take as we usually take it for granted 
I mean, this kind of intelligence is is more or like I mean, it's it's there being in in our head. But when we try to, I mean, think of how this particular even let's say when I open this phone, it and, and this gets gets opened. I mean, it has a face unlock in it. So now this phone knows how my face looks like. But the question is, how, how this phone get that? I mean, how this phone got that particular intelligence that okay, he's the, this particular phone is able to recognize how a face looks like, and then it is able to classify my face from all the different faces in the world. Okay, so that that's that's some I mean, use case of uh, data science that that we have. So again, I mean, the question is how the game works. So the game works. Uh, which which kind of we got from you people is it learns from experiences it has a recognition i mean it recognizes stuff there is some code behind it and uh, the pack there is some there's some pattern matching which is which is being happening so i mean the next question is what is the usual answers i get so that's how you think it it is recognizing that those particular drawings and how you think the pattern matching pa matching is happening anyone So basically, you can uh, that by feeding it, it in the past information. Okay, that, that's that's I mean kind of correct. So if we if it, if we can think of like how this particular game works, so there there's kind of two approaches to it. I mean, every time when you want to solve a problem, so how it happens is you have a problem. You have you can you can have a business problem. So let's say a business problem is uh, you want to transport uh, this particular stuff from here to there. I mean, at a particular uh, area. Or you want to say increase your sales that's a business problem or maybe you want to let's say check if your if uh, a particular stuff is there at its place or not if you want to check if a car is up to its quality or not if you want to check if your food is uh, rotten or not okay so these all are uh, the four like the world problems that you have i mean these are all the problems these are these are all the business problems that we have so what we do is we usually i mean being uh, not not being a layman so now what i will try to do is i'll try to make you think like not not a normal human being you would think like a problem solver i mean you would be thinking like a problem solver over here, over here okay so previously uh, yeah that's that's correct Krishna. i mean that that's kind of correct so what we do is we have a problem now we kind of want to solve that particular problem and what we do is being a problem solver being being from stem background i mean science technology engineering and mathematics what we do is we try to convert that particular problem into a mathematical problem that that's kind of a first step okay so computers not always solve the problems remember this thing computers not not uh, who always solves the problem okay first what we do is we think of that okay that's a problem you want to convert that particular problem into a mathematical problem once that particular problem gets converted to a mathematical problem, then what we can do is we can code that particular thing out. Coding means what we can do is we can ask computers to solve it. Okay. So then what we do is we convert that problem into a computational problem. So that's how usually stuff works in the world. I mean, this is, this is how it works. You have a problem. Okay. Now, uh, this problem gets converted. You want you want a solution to it. So this, this problem gets converted into mathematical problem. Okay. And now what you do is once it get converted into mathematical problem, you find solution to it. And then you ask your, uh, then, then after finding the solution, you get, this gets converted into computational problem. And then you solve it uh, using computers. I mean, you ask computers to solve it. So that's that's kind of how it 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 works in in the in the, in the real world. So for example, let's say let's say I mean I'm mean, a very very basic example. So let's say there is a car here. I mean uh, you're you're going for a picnic. You have this uh, extra boot space there, and you have your back seats here. So you want to optimize this. Okay, what is a computational problem? So Ankur, computational problem is something which which is related to computers. I mean the problems which are kind of related to computers, which which uh, you can solve on computers. Those are kind of with the kind of called computation problems. So we'll discuss that that in detail. I mean, we'll move forward. So I mean, as you can see, uh, there is a first step to solve the problems. Uh, binary problems, not 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 the binary one. So binary is something. I mean, essentially binary means uh, two binary. So uh, you can you could say it's like two true or false, one or zero, 
minus one or one. So whenever you have say a data or whatever, when you, whenever you designate some essence into two things, you have a whole universe of two things, then you say it as it's a binary universe. Okay. So what usually happens is, I mean, that's, that's, part, that's a particular agenda. Uh, you have a problem, you convert it into a mathematical problem and you, then you uh, convert it into a computation problem. You ask computers to solve it. That's a, that's how you make it at a computation problem. Now the point here is, I mean, the previous, this, this particular game, which we just saw, this can be solved in two ways. No, I mean, you, you could solve it in two ways. So, I mean, first way is the rule-based approach, uh, the rule-based approach again, in the second way is the machine learning ones, which is, which is this. So we're going to be discussing both of it. So let's say I talk about solving this particular problem using the rule-based approach, which is being there. I mean, which is being there from the very past, which is, which is being solved from, I mean, let's say the problem is, uh, I want to make a tea for myself, or I want to make coffee for for myself. So there's a rule for that. No, there's a particular set of steps, which I can perform and, uh, that would, that would solve the problem. So let's say the step would be take these, this, these ingredients, put, put it there, uh, perform this, this steps, uh, fire up the, uh, you fire up using lighter and let's say, make it, uh, 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 let it get hot for 10 minutes and then drink it. So that's about those, those are certain steps which are ordered, which I can follow. And that would essentially solve the problem. Okay. But the problem over here is who thinks those steps? I mean, if I ask you. Who is the one which think of those steps? Anyone? Anyone here who, who can tell me? I mean, let's say in, in the simple problem, I mean, I just want to make a T, let's say. Who is the one thinking the steps? Problem solver, brain. Yes, exactly. So it's it's the one, I mean, it's me, you know. I have that problem. I'm solving that problem using my brain. So I'm using my cognitive services. I mean, use, I'm using my brain. I'm the problem solver. I'm using my brain to solve, to get those tips. Now what I can do is I can, uh, let's say, ask someone, maybe ask a computer, ask a coffee machine, ask a tea making machine, ask, ask my maid to, to, to make that particular tea. No? So it's more of like, I know the steps. Now I can ask anyone to make those, uh, to make, to make tea for me. Problem is solved in my brain right now. Okay. The problem is being solved by my brain. So it's me who's solving the problem. Execution of solution is it can be done anyone, anyone that's, that's not a problem, but thinking of that particular solution, what are those steps that we have to take? I mean, in, in this particular case, how you would be recognizing that, but those particular, uh, objects and how you would be classifying, uh, classifying those particular objects. So that's the problem. I mean, if you want to classify those particular objects, you should be able to recognize them. So the problem is recognition. Recognition is the problem. And I don't want to solve it by myself. I don't want to solve it by myself. I mean, I don't want to solve it using my brain. I want my computers to be able to solve it. Okay. So this is essentially what is artificial intelligence or data science or machine learning. I mean, I'll, I'll discuss uh, how these things are different, but essentially this is, this is the crux, the correct problem of, I would say, this is, this is how, uh, I mean, the whole area of data, data science is a machine learning revolves. So. Uh, we'll discuss that also. I mean, so this is the rule-based approach. What we do is we frame the goal of the product. So let's say uh, framing the goal of product is more, more or like, uh, what I want to basically, what is my goal? So let's say my goal is recognizing these objects, or maybe my goal is uh, making a tea, making a cup of tea, or my goal is, I just want to go somewhere for a, for a trip. So those, that, that's my goal. No. So what I will do is I will, my designers and engineers will, uh, deploy a logic. I mean, they will, they'll, what, what they're going to do is they're going to think of a logic. Okay. That's how, uh, I will be, uh, maybe, uh, I'll take those steps. I'll take this, this particular, uh, object, this particular, these particular tools, I'll apply those operations. And after those operations, I, I will apply further operations. Then I'll paint that thing up and my product, product is ready. So all of this thinking is done by the engineers and designers and then you could, you could just define your goals. That's that kind of more or like, uh, you created the product and now, you know, you're checking if that's pro the product is up to the mark or not, but the point over here is, uh, how it works. I mean, the, it works by my brain It works by the prop, the brain of the problem solver, the designers, the engineers. 
So if, if I could just think of uh, by this problem only. So if the object dot height is let's say greater than 10, do X. If the object dot color is blue, do Y. If the object number of legs is less than uh, greater than two, let's say two. So now let's say uh, they asked me to draw a cow. Okay. So I could I could use this if case, no? I mean, if object has the number of legs is more than four, it can be a cow. But the point over here is it can be a dog also. So in that case, I'll use the height case. So it, it would be more of like if object dot number of legs is greater than four. In that case, if height is, let's say less than one meter, then it's a dog else it's a cow. But the point over here is again, what that height less than one meter, it can be a cat also. No. So if the nose is less than two centimeter, then it's a cat else. It's a dog in this particular case. So can you think of, uh, how many logics I have to make? I mean, can I, can I, uh, write each and every logic to, uh, uh, determine all the objects? Is it, is it, is it, is it a valid solution to this problem? Is it possible? What do you think people? I think it's not possible. No, I mean, now what about a mouse? What about a candle? How would I differentiate a candle from a cow? Can I write a, can I write a logic for that? Of course I write, but for how many cases I, I am able to do that? Now that's a question. So, I mean, I mean, Karthik, what do you think about it? Or maybe Amit? I think the code, the code will be lengthy. Sorry. Okay. Ramya, what do you think? I mean, would I be able to write each and every cases? Okay. Yes. And as Angkor, what Angkor said is if number of legs are greater than four, so it could be a spider also. So the point over here is I have a lot, lot, lot to learn. I mean, I have a lot of stuff to take care of, which I cannot do basically. I mean, so one of the point that Ankur mentioned, so there would be a lot of, lot of points around it. No. So yes, Karthik. So that's not possible. Writing every case is, I mean, going, going, uh, using the rule based approach is not possible. So let's say one of the, I mean, if I ask you to, let's say, Hey, can you book me a flight? That can be done using rule based approach. There is no problem in that. What you could do is, I mean, all you need to do is let's say, go on particular website, click on, uh, I mean, you just search the flights and you click on book. So that's everything after what you do is clicking on the book button, everything happens, which is kind of same. I mean, I mean, if anything can, who has more than, yeah, exactly. You see, it can be anything. So when you click on book, when you click on book flight, Everything which happens after that is same for every flight booking. There is no, there is no significant difference. I mean, the, the steps that the system has to take, those are identical every time, every time they'll take the same steps. So there is that, that, that particular problem can be solved using a rule-based approach, but identifying objects cannot be solved using rule-based approach. So the two things which we learned right now is, uh, artificial intelligence, data science and machine learning is more about uh, taking, I mean, learning the cognitive, uh, I would say intelligence and not just solving the problem. Okay. So we have some cognitive, cognitive intelligence in our mind I and mean, being a human, what we do is we usually take it for granted because let's say I'm able to, in, in the first go, I'm able to detect, okay, this, that's a phone, that's a mobile phone. So now let if let's say after six months, I will see that, that particular object, I will say, okay, that's a mobile phone. Even let's say if I see a particular type of car, okay. I recognize that's a, that's a maybe Corolla Altus. So next time if I see that particular car, okay, I will say, okay, that, uh, that this is that, that car, which I've seen, I mean, say six months back. So humans is humans are that intelligent. Okay. So this is what we call cognitive intelligence or, the, or, uh, this is what we call cognitive intelligence. Now. Essentially, I mean, the, the point of the whole course, which you will be go and, uh, I mean, undergoing is you would learn to put that cognitive intelligence into machines. Okay. And that's what, that's why, I mean, those are, that, that's obviously, obviously artificial. No, so that's why we call it. That's why we call it as artificial intelligence. Okay. So two things we learned is we have some cognitive intelligence in my, in our head. 
we have to put that intelligence into machine that so that's why it would be called as artificial intelligence data science is machine learning deep learning everything is a part of that particular artificial intelligence only now the point over it is why we want to solve or maybe why we want to do that i mean of course there should be motive around everything no you want to learn data science but why because of course there are some problems which are kind of first world problems i would say this, these are the problems which which are kind of burning right now i mean these are the burning problems so i think this in this case the rule based approach is just writing huge number exactly exactly so see so it's more of more of like writing a huge number of lines and that and that's 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 not the problem that's not the solution of this particular problem so it, it's futile this particular thing is futile so point is till date we have almost almost solved uh, i mean every problem using rule based so whatever is the problem is if it can be solved using rule based any person can solve that particular problem because we have a lot of tools available so before let's say let's say you want to uh, uh, i mean uh, bind two things you have fevi call you have fevi quick you you can even say uh, pass a screw through them you can tape them up so every particular i mean i'm talking about let's say let's say go to the stone age no i mean if if i go to the stone age so over there what what happens if if you have to bind two things that's a that's a hell lot of task no binding two things together but now it's not a task no we are kind of got matured and evolved so everything which can be done using a rule based solution can can be done anyone can be done by anybody so that's the problem why it's why it's a problem because being a human you always i mean uh, crave something better you always have a scope of improvement so now if, if something is something which is which can be done by anybody that would con- that would be considered as a low skilled work i mean if there is a task which can be done by anybody so that's what we call as a low skilled task okay now the world is transitioning and we are solving the problems which are not being solved by in the rule based approach and we are trying to solve the problems which are solved by artificial intelligence i mean we are trying to solve problems which are uh, solved by the cognitive uh, mind so if i if i i mean just go again up in the next slide and check i mean can i solve this using a machine learning approach and what would be the machine learning approach so what i could do is i could frame the goal of product i mean what i have to do next thing is i can train a model using examples so first thing is i cannot write say 1 lakh lines of code i cannot write 1 lakh like, 1 lakh line lines of cases but i can get 1 lakh images of apple i can get 1 lakh images of a, of dog that is visible i mean i can get 1 lakh images of dog so that that is visible no so what i can do is i can collect a lot of data i can get a, mach- a mathematical function so let me be very very honest with you there is nothing called model there is nothing called intelligence everything is mathematics and d- d- data sciences and artificial intelligence so i w- i have a mathematical function i will pass every how the whole images the whole whole lot of data into that mathematical function and i'll get an output i'll get an output so in that function there would be some uh, values or there would be some variables that i will learn that 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 will change so that mathematical function next time when i will pass one image in that particular function it will give me the output whether it is a dog or it is a cat so that that's essentially how your uh, how everything in data, in data science works i mean what you do is you have a function you have you have you have a mathematical function okay you pass something in it in the first step so let's say your mathematical function is ax plus by i mean that simple or even even let's say it's ax only a or b uh, if i could write more clearly so it will be like let's let's say it's mx plus c y is equal to mx plus c your y is your output and your this is this is the function this is the input so that's a function of x no i mean the one who who has uh, done 10th level mathematics would be able to understand it that what i'm writing so first time you pass x i mean what you do is what you'll do is you will pass x over here you will learn what is m what is c next time next time if you pass x so how it, how it works is let's say you have y is equal to mx plus c okay and uh, can anybody tell me how you solve this equation i mean how can you get the values of m and c anyone here who 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 has, who has done graduate uh, i mean uh, high school mathematics not even high school i think secondary school mathematics would work 
let's say you have two points i mean that that's equation of line so let's say this particular line passes through uh, this is this line okay it passes to through point 0 comma 2 and let's say 1 comma 0 so what i can do is i can put these points over here so let's say it passes through 0 comma 2 and 1 comma 0 so can i get can i get the values of uh, uh mnc from here of course i can get what i'll do is i'll just put it here so it would be 2 is equal to c and the next time it would be 1 is equal to maybe uh 1 is equal it, it would be minus 2 is equal to m so that that's what what i'm gonna get so next time it would be y is equal to minus 2x plus 2. now the point over here is can can you think of if i put now if i if i'm gonna put x here can i get the value of y can i get the value of y in can you confirm that if you are able to understand it people i mean if i put the value of x here let's say i'm gonna put two here can i get the value of y from that yes exactly yes. so what i what i technically did is i had two data points i mean i had two points i had a machine learning model i had what i had is this this zero is my I mean, this, let's say this zero is my image and this two is my output. This one is my image and this zero is my output. So your Y is your independent variable. Your X is your dependent variable. Y is something which I want to learn. X is something which I already know. So what I did is I passed these two data points through my model. I learned what, what is what, what I learned. So take this is uh, focus on this point. I learned it. I learned the value of M and C. This is what we call machine learning. So right now I did my, did, did it manually. No, it can be done automatically using, using the mathematics. I mean, using calculus, th there is a formulation which you could be, I mean, you, which you could put in computers and computer will find out the value of MNC automatically. So I learned the value of MNC and now my, my machine learning model is trained, trained on what trained on data. Okay. Trained on data. And the next time, what, what I can do is I can pass some data in it and I can get the result. So that that's essentially how machine learning works. That that's what we call machine learning, deep learning data. So this, this is, this is the crux of everything. I mean, whatever you would be studying is, is it would be revolving around this stuff only. Now the point over it is what's different here. Different here is like right now I, I put the value manually. I put the value manually and got it. Yes, please. I, yes, sure. I, I'll repeat it. So what I did is I had this equation y is equal to mx plus c. And I had two points, 0, 2, 1, 0. So this is the value of X and this is the value of Y. I solved this equation by putting these values here. After solving, I got M is equal to 2 and C is equal to minus 2. Then I put this values in this equation and the equation became Y is equal to uh, 2C uh, minus or uh, minus uh, 2 uh, two, uh, sorry, sorry. Why is it became my y is equal to minus this was minus and this was plus minus two x plus two. Now I can put the value of x here and I can get the value of x. So let's say x is let's say my the value of x is uh, maybe uh, two. So the, for that it will be minus four plus two, it would be minus two. Y would be minus two. So what I did is this is my data. This is what, what I call my data. This is my machine learning model over here. I learned my model. This is machine learning and, and essentially this is prediction. So I'm, I'm trying to predict the value of Y using the value of X. That's how the whole machine learning stuff works. Of course, it's, it's not that easy. I mean, of course. So this is Y is equal to MX plus C. So when we'll be moving towards the problem of, uh, I mean, the next problem, which, which over, which we'll be moving. So, I mean, and we'll be discussing what is an image and how the image looks like. I mean, in next, I think 10 minutes, we'll be doing that. So over there, you will see how complex this thing is, but essentially the crux is same. So that's how you're going to solve it. Point is, let's say this, this particular equation is, uh, of, uh, is in, uh, let's say hundred variables. So now how, how are you going to solve it? I mean, if, if the equation becomes like this, y is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 till m n x n. So that's not, you, you know, you're not able to solve it on paper. You have to use computers for it. So that's essentially what I said. Like now this becomes a computational problem to solve this, this mathematical problem. Okay. So what I just want to tell you is, I just want to tell you, you have, you have a model, which is a mathematical function. You have data points. 
you put that data points in your model model will learn that and then essentially next time what you can do is you can put your values in it and you can get output you can predict something you can, you can classify something you can do uh, for uh, i mean there is uh, a, a good understanding of mathematics mathematics which is required but i think that so i mean for for this particular course there is no prerequisite for machine learning we have prerequisite uh, whatever prerequisite is required for uh, ml is being covered in the course comprehensively so i mean i can i can say that because i'm the one who teaches teaches i mean i'm one of the person who teaches here so i know i mean everything is being covered uh, in 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 lot of detail so this is how you're going to be solving that, this particular problem using machine learning if i move move forward so i mean yes let, let's have a quiz around it so now what what we did is we we kind of uh, understood like there is something called rule based approach there is something called machine learning approach there is significant difference between them there is a significant difference between that in terms of what kind of problems it they solve and what kind of approaches i mean how they solve that particular problem so now we can i mean have a quiz around it so let's say uh, you're listening to music on spotify youtube premium or whatever now you want to alphabetizing a list of song titles i mean i mean you want to sort the list of songs using their name so what what, what kind of problem it is can you solve that using rule based approach yes yes that's that's a i mean sorting problem no that you just need to arrange them in a sort sorting order so i mean sorting is is a very very basic problem there's a lot of algorithms to solve uh, elements so in 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 our school as in assembly like people people arrange themselves in a in a uh, line in terms of increasing height so you can arrange uh, values in an order easily without any uh, machine learning help no that's a rule based approach so let's say you want a 3 2 1 4 9 so let's say i want to sort this out so one algorithm can be i'll traverse through this whole list i mean i i'll see all the elements i'll uh, select the minimum and place it here so one was the minimum again traverse select the minimum place it here traverse select the minimum place it here traverse select the minimum place it here traverse select the minimum place it sorry for being redundant it kind of i mean i know it's a pain in air your ears but anyhow so th that's a problem which is kind of rule based no that's a that's a rule based problem done ranking web search results what kind of problem you think it would be i mean you search something on google how google decides which website should be at the top and which website should be at the bottom anyone i mean of course i'm not asking like how they rank it but what do you think which kind of problem it, it would be would it be a rule based approach or would it be a machine learning problem okay so she let okay there can, yeah that's a very very good i mean parameter number of visitors so okay so this this is kind of a both mixed of both i mean you can do it using rule based you can do it using machine learning previously i mean few years back it was done using the rule based approach like sushil said that by number of visitors you can do it by number of clicks you can do it but right now it it has it is being done using machine learning i mean what what you are writing in it so let's say you are writing uh, what is the height of barack obama so it, it can give you a different is that but uh, if in case you asking uh, who is barack obama so it can give you a different results even though both of the websites contain uh, i mean information about barack obama but what google do is it uh, it uh, it comes up with the website which makes more context to your question also and not just simple parameters like number of clicks and all so if let's say we going to do going to be doing using rule based approach that can be more more click i mean websites which is more 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 click or the number of click but there can be machine learning pro, uh, approach to it also as i discussed so it can be done in both so predicting the house prices in let's say hyderabad what do you think yes by comparing that that kind of that, that, that can also be done so predicting the house prices by based on location what do you think what how what kind of problem it would be okay both so vaishnavi how can you do it using a rule based approach
exactly so what you going to be doing is you going to be comparing it with the last data so what what how it going to be doing so you will have some features you will have some parameters like how close it uh, the, that particular properties uh, from bus stand how close that particular properties from uh, airport how close that particular property is from let's say fresh water how close that property is from uh, hospital how close that property is from amusement parks so we're going to be evaluating all that stuff so that cannot be done using a leap loop based approach you know so there will be a lot of if else cases there so i think that should be a machine learning problem i think is yes, more in theater also this yes, really i mean entertainment is one of the essential parts right now mrutanjay if you could just not annotate i'll be very grateful i mean if you want to draw some doodle something you can but unless unless and until it makes come i mean you you are good at it so just doodle only that only then if you're good at doodling you can draw something so processing online payments regulation prescribe yes yes krishna so what do you think processing online payments would that be a machine learning approach or uh, a rule based approach so he rule based anyone else so uh, maharaj mohammed what do you think or maybe mohammed shahib akhtar or maybe monica or maybe navin reddy anyone what do you think would that be rule based or okay so i got a lot of so i mean i'm getting a lot of messages in direct messages also so that's a rule based approach i think yep that's a rule based approach of course so there is nothing new in getting i mean processing payments no every every payment has to be processed in the same way nothing new in that yeah monica you want to say something okay nice one classifying an object in a photo what do you think would that be a rule based approach or ml approach that's that's an ml approach i meant very very clear so if i if i could oh thanks thanks for a lot of answers so if i could basically try to classify between what is being a rule based approach and what is being a machine learning approach rule based approach rules are already defined by the designer improvements come along from the algorithms and network i mean if you want to improve that particular thing you have to change the rules but in machine learning we learn from the data we learn patterns from the data machine itself learns patterns from the data and it improves by additional data so how it can be let's say i'm just training my machine learning model on on bigger dogs exactly according to problem patterns get changed so even according to the data the patterns get changed so let's say i'm 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 uh, training my machine learning model on bigger dogs only let's say i mean labra or uh, i mean rot rottweiler or I, i'm not into i mean i mean foreign dog cat <laughs> breeds but i can name few of them so let's say golden retriever or maybe uh, uh polka dots but let's say i forgot to add pug there so what would happen my machine learning will model will not able to understand that that the dogs can be small also so but but how what what happens is if i could let's say get some photos of uh, smaller dogs and train machine learning model again so it would it would be able to understand no ml model will be able to understand okay the dogs can be small and these are the type of small dogs so improvement comes from the data itself okay so ankur said that, that uh, he didn't understand how it can be rule based so ankur uh so payment question i mean let's say what is uh i mean just for, let's say forget about online payment let's say i want to pay something to you how can i pay i'll take out the money and i'll give it to you i mean uh, if i if i design algorithm first thing is you will ask me for for a, for, for a certain amount let's say you you said okay give me x x um inr i'll calculate the x inr in terms of cash i'll give it to you will it change if someone else else ask me it will not change no only the value of x will change so the steps of sending money is same so there is nothing new which machine has to learn in terms of what machine has to do machine is doing the same job essentially every time just the num- just the amount is changing no 
so nothing you need to learn for machine in that so that's why it's a rule based approach yes so one more thing that i got from amin is that rule based approach are time taking and uh, ml approaches are like real time processing so i would say that rule based approach are, are very very fast i mean you are obviously correct solving a rule based problem might be will will be a lot of time taking will will take a lot of time because you have to think of all the problems by yourself but when you will execute it it will be breeze so because all the rules are already i mean created no so every time you have to execute you just you just need to execute those steps so rule based approaches are very very fast when you execute them but very very slow and hard to design on the other hand machine learning approaches will take time on machine to learn but uh, i mean that's kind of uh, it can it can also take time oh, what i said yeah on the oh, let let me i think i got confused so in the machine learning approaches when you train machine learning algorithm so it kind of takes relatively less time as compared to rule based approach because in rule based approach you are designing designing it by by yourself you are you are uh, creating rules by yourself but in machine learning a larger set of rules can be created in less number of time because computer is doing it and on the other side when you have to let's say execute it sometimes machine learning pipelines are are kind of uh, get, uh, it becomes slow i mean it's not slow but it's more of like machine learning problem is way bigger than the rule based problem so whatever you solve using rule based will obviously computation will be computationally less expensive so the number of operation that you have to perform in rule based will be always less but when you when you when you talk about machine learning so it's it's kind of i mean a lot of lot of uh, uh, calculations that you perform okay so there is an idea to implementation of machine learning so we could let's say i mean have a word on that also but i think uh, okay we'll see this video anyways I mean, that's a good one so after that after seeing this video we'll be talking about some of the machine learning uh, types of machine learning problems and then we'll be shifting towards uh, solving the colorization problem okay suppose you have a great business idea yeah and you've already gone through the effort to frame it as a machine learning problem what next how does your idea become a working machine learning solution the process has three phases data modeling and production in the data phase you identify the input data that your machine learning system needs to make successful predictions data may come from databases log files web pages and even other machine learning systems once you identify data inputs and sources you use statistical tools to draw insights about the data the better you know your data the more useful hypotheses you can make data rarely comes in an ideal state Data needs to be collated, possibly by joining different data sources, and cleaned for the machine learning model to work optimally. Cleaner data results in better predictions. For a machine learning problem, you start with the input data and convert it into features. Features are key properties of the data. For a supervised machine learning problem, you transform the outcome into labels. Labels represent the intended output of the machine learning system. joining data sources cleaning the data and engineering the features and labels takes time plan on spending a large portion of your time in the data phase modeling phase along with the features and labels you set up the kind of machine learning system needed called the model researchers have created all sorts of machine learning models from simple to complex some models classify data other models predict numeric values tools like google's tensorflow support many types of machine learning models for various uses before a model can make predictions it needs training which is like sending the model to school first there are lessons to learn from the data along the way there are quizzes to check knowledge and correct any misunderstandings in the end there's a final exam When training the model, you split the data into three sets: training, validation, and test. The training set corresponds to lessons. Here, the model processes data for the first time. 
it starts to infer patterns in the data to help make predictions. After you've trained the model once, you quiz it using the validation set. Based on how well the model does on the quiz, you may decide to adjust the model settings or hyperparameters, which are like dials and switches for changing the model's behavior, and retrain the model again to give it the quiz again. The goal is to iteratively find settings that provide the best model quality on the validation set. When the model meets your success criteria, it's time for the final exam. Feed your model the test set. If the model predicts well, it passes the course and is ready for real use. Once your ML system is ready for the world, it's time to move the system into production. For starters, your system may need integration into a product. You need to figure out what this integration looks like and whether your model interacts with users. Models may need retraining on a regular basis with new data to pick up on new patterns or trends. This training could come from new data sets or from interactions with users. The system needs monitoring. This means tracking system outages, errors, data processing volume and speed, and how successfully it predicts results. Machine learning systems also require maintenance. As with any production system, this means fixing bugs, adding features that didn't make it into version one, and the like. Machine learning specific maintenance could include testing other models and setting. So I could like, you could just talk about till, till the testing part itself. So it was more of like, more of like understanding like how the whole pipeline works, the, how the how whole machine learning pipeline works. So this, this video is around that. So I hope you got some, some of the insights out of it. Now, if, if we talk about the process of machine learning, so it's more of like, we have to focus on, focus on user, we define our objective, we collect data, what, whatever we have to do, then we train the model and then we just predict and evaluate if my model is doing great or not. So let's say if it's not doing great, so what we can do is we collect, we can collect more data, which can, which can, which, we, uh, which can help us, but we can focus on what was the question again. I mean, we can, we can reiterate the, we, we can reiterate on the problem itself. So that's how, that's how it, it works. In terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, how they differ from each other. So AI is the whole lot of set. I mean, everything that is being intelligent is AI. So anything, a, 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 a switch, a, a, a tube light, which is there, which can, uh, let, let's say, uh, bright up when you come in the room and gets off when you go outside the room can be a part of AI. I mean, IoT intelligent, I mean, int uh, connected to the inter uh, internet of things. Uh, intelligent systems, everything, fuzzy logic that com which everything comes under AI. There's a part of AI, which is, which is, uh, called machine learning, which is related to computers, very, very, very train models and, and, uh, where you get data, you train models and uh, predict something out of it or maybe classify in that machine learning. There is a set, which is, we call deep learning. So deep learning is what, when this things get complex, I mean, where, when we actually solve the first world problems. So machine learning is when we are just basically predicting the basic thing, let's say predicting the house prices on, on some very less number of features. So when I say, uh, you want to predict the price of house, there can be few parameters. We, we just discussed like how far it, it is from air play, uh, airport, how far it is from railway station or mall or theater. When we, when we talk about, you have to classify an image into dog and dog and, uh, let's say cat. Now that's a problem where you have to deal with more data, deal with more stuff. So that comes under deep learning. It's, uh, it's AI have sensors. Yes. I mean, I, uh, the things that, which, which, ha which has been in IoT, it comes under art artificial intelligence. So we always have, I mean, there are problems where, where we have sensors. So let's say, uh, if I talk about a problem where I have to maintain the maintain us, uh, predict like what temperature should be there according to, according to the goods in cold storage. So that's a, a problem, machine learning problem. And it has a lot of sensors. I mean, therm, uh, uh, thermostat in it. So cold storages will have thermostat voltage stable. I mean, voltage voltmeters, ammeter, power power meter. So everything would be there. We'll be getting inputs from thermostat. Like what is the temperature there? And let's say you want to increase it, decrease it according to the goods. How many goods are there? How many? What, what is being, what is the activity being performed in that particular cold storage? Will that activity increase uh, the heat? Decrease the heat? So there is a lot of questions. 
I mean, the, the I mean, sensors are, are are the vital part from where we get data, where we generate data. So sensors generates a lot of data. So that was essentially, I mean, artificial intelligence as machine learning. If I talk about big data, algorithms and technology, you no, know, machine learning is a part. I mean, the subset of all the three. Okay, so let's talk about some problems which which is being there in machine learning. So machine, the first type of problem is classification, where you, where you basically classify your uh, sorry. Okay, I'm going down. So classify classification is one of the problems that that is in machine learning, where you basically get different data. You try to classify the data into labeled categories. So let's say you get images, you want to classify into lions. You want to classify. I mean, you want to classify into different animals. You want to classify that into different objects. So that's that's the problem of classification. Regression is the problem where you basically predict something out, where you do predictive analysis. Let's say I want to predict the cost of this flight. Uh, from Hyderabad to Mumbai, how how much it it will cost? Okay, so that's a that's a problem of regression, linear regression, or maybe any other type of regression. Now there is a type of problem what we call clustering. Clustering is where you again cluster data into different clusters. I mean, you segregate data into different clusters, but this time, like how it is different from classification. This times you don't know what. Is the label for that? I mean, you don't know how a lion looks like or how a tiger looks like. All you know is this particular type of data looks the same. This particular data looks the same. I don't know what what are the labels for that. Okay, so that that's what we call clustering. There is something called sequence prediction. Sequence prediction is uh, according to some past values, what would be the next next values? So this is more around. Let's say you're 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 writing uh, something on the keyboard. So you get the next words by yourself. So this is sequence prediction. There is something called style transfer. Yes, yes, exactly. According to the properties, we can uh, see just output, right? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, when we talk about black box models, we only see the output. But when we are talking about machine learning, you can also visualize how how the internal things things is happening. So we will we'll discuss everything in course. I mean, uh, in in a lot of detail moving forward. So sequence style style transfer is more like. When you apply some style on your photo, I mean, let's say you are trying to, uh, I mean, fo do photo editing using AI, so that that can be done. So there can be a quiz around. I mean, I just don't want to get into it, bec but because we have a, uh, I mean, a next part which is there. So what we what we gonna do now right now is I'm gonna be talking about uh, a particular problem, the problem of uh, coloring images. So let me. Open that slide. So, okay, I think it's it there. So, essentially, uh, what what I'm gonna be uh, trying right now is what we gonna be trying right now is we're gonna be solving a deep learning problem and understanding how it is being solved. Okay, so what we gonna do is, I mean, it's it's true. We'll have a black but we will create a machine learning or deep learning system that will. Uh, fill colors in black and white images automatically. So you have a black and white image. You can pass it in deep learning model, and it will color the images by itself. So now that uh, that's what cognitive uh, my mind uh, it, it is required. I mean that's where the mind is required. How do you know that that particular thing is sky? And now you have to paint it. Paint it in which color? So you cannot write if else cases for cases for that. You cannot write a lot of uh, statements for that. Okay. But you can have a lot of images. I mean, you can have lakh, thousand, two thousand. I mean, not thousand. You can you can have images in, in in billions also because there is a lot of images on internet. So you cannot write billions of lines, but you can have you can have billions of images. I mean, you can have a lot of data. So like, what do you want? To, why do you want to solve this particular problem? Because it, it's there in a lot of uh, cases. So let's say you have satellite images. So satellite images are also always I mean black and white. If you will see, so th those are color refined. I mean, if you'll see, so uh, can you tell me like any other example where where this will help anyone? Will this help in uh, thermal thermal imaging? So all the images which which is being captured by thermal camera are black and white. We can fill color in that. Satellite images those are black and white. We can fill color in that. Even some of the MRI. I mean, if you'll see. Uh, the the, uh, the MRI that happens of your brain and all, so that's also black and white. We can fill colors in that, but if exactly we can fill colors in old images, we can convert your old movies into colored movies. 
so there is a lot of use cases around it i mean uh, colored mri image, imaging uh, uses the same stuff which is being discussed right now so that that's why there is a lot of buzz around why you want to solve this particular problem but the point is i mean how you going to be solving the problem i mean what is the manual way manual way is you have lines around the stuff what you do is you try to understand okay what is this this is a sky what what is the color of sky color of sky is blue so i'll paint blue here so that that's the manual i mean way how you how you paint an image no why we need to automate we just discussed what is an image now this is that's an important question so what is actually an image now that's an important question so uh, let's say you have this image i mean any image so image is nothing but it's a 2d array or a matrix i mean it's a 2d matrix it, it's a matrix like this where you have length i mean where you have the length and where you have the breadth okay so when i when i say yes yes she i've seen a, i've seen that also so collecting of data of objects collecting of data and objects so, uh, no no that's not an image i mean of course it can be something but that's it's kind of not an image so if i talk about an image so i mean i will just exit and let's say i mean if i if i search image of uh, uh who you for for okay let's let's search for subhash chandra boss only as so she will said so we can do it i mean if i if i search for images so let's say this is an image it's 11352 so what that essentially mean is you have 1513 pixels here and 1131 pixels here okay what that mean is image is nothing but the collection of pixels it's a 2d matrix where i mean there would be pixel here there would be pixel 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 pixel, pixel, pixel. so let's say an image is there It, it's a two by two image. So what it essentially means is you will have two pixels in this, and you will have two pixels here. So now this is a these are two pixels in this way, and these are two pixels in that way. So that's that's nothing but just the collection of pixels. And I don't know if my my I mean if my Photoshop will work or not. It usually crashes. I mean I have a can't tell you, but I have a version of Photoshop in my MacBook, but. it always crashes when i open it let me try if it it, it gets crashed or not i'll i'll show you the pixels in that case okay please don't crash please don't crash please don't crash okay i think it it didn't crash thank god any images is already there i can open maybe let's say this is okay it's, it's not there maybe this uh i mean let's say this is an image so i'll go here down 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 I, i'm going to be zooming it out till i start start seeing pixels you let me know when you are able to see pixels you let me know when you are able to see pixels can you can you see pixels now or should i zoom zoom it more okay so these are pixels no if i if i check this the shape of image on in the photoshop so image size oops i think it got okay i got it i got it at the top so my image size is this much of pixels so right now it's, uh, let me open it in pixels so i have 1500 pixels in the width and 2000 pixels in the height so that what essentially that mean is i have 2000 pixels here And fifteen thousand pixels here. Okay, so th that is how this image is being composed. That that's an image of I mean that that's how the image is being created using pixels. Okay, so that that's how this image is being created. Now let me let me close this thing out and uh, uh, go back to what I was saying. So I was I was talking about this particular images, uh, like how this image how 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 images look how it looks like. so we can move forward and think of how uh, i mean I, i will try to formulate the problem for in front of you so coloring images is the problem i want to uh, let's say i have an i have an image so now one more thing i want to add how a pixel looks like i mean how a pixel looks like so let's say that's an image or maybe so let's say that's an image a colored pixel will have three values in it r 
G, I mean R, G, and B. A colored image will have always three values in it: R, G, and B. Remember this thing very carefully. Colored pixels will have R, G, B three values. So any image, which is essentially let's say the size of image is n into m. So essentially, it would be n into m into three. There would be a depth also in the image, and the size of depth would be three only. I mean, this particular size would be three. So every pixel would be three size. Every value. So let's say this is a pixel. So this pixel would have R, G, B in it. Okay. But let's say if an image is a black and white image, it does not have any color in it. So let's say this is a black and white image. It will not have a depth. So it would be only of one size. And a pixel will only have one value. How much light or how much dark it is. So let's say I, I have a black and white image. So it, it's uh, every pixel will will start from zero to hundred. So let's say it's a black pixel. So it can be this. It's a white pixel. It can be zero. It's a gray pixel. So it would be fifty. It's a light gray pixel. So it would lie in fifty to zero. It would. It's a. It's a dark gray pixel. So it would be. It would lie under fifty to hundred. Fifty to hundred. Yes. So that's how it works. I mean, I could show it to you, but that that would take. A, I mean, again, need to open Photoshop again. Or maybe maybe I I could do one thing. I have something in my system which is called digital color meter. So maybe let's say this is a this is a image. This is a image of Hindustani bhau. Okay, I'm not getting it down. Let me. Yep. No, I think I'll get that system. Yes, here it is. So if you'll see, no, uh, this image might see. I mean, the, uh, this this colorful image are getting RG. You're getting RGB values. Technically, you're getting RGB is here, but every value is same. Can you see? It's one time to do one fifty, one fifty, one fifty, one eighty eight, one eighty eight, one eighty eight. So, if it's a black and white image, you will have one value only. If it's a colored image, you have three values. It, that thing is clear. Okay. Now, if I come to the point, so this colorization problem, like what is what the problem over here is? Technically, the problem is like I mean, what I want to do is I have a I have oh 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 oh. I have a value of lightness. I want to find R and G and B, red, green, and blue out of that that class uh, that that value. But that's kind of difficult predicting three values out of one value. So how I change it into it, I change it into from R G B. I change my color coding to uh, A B space. So now A B space is again one of the things how you define your uh, pixel. There, there is HSV. There, there is a lot of, I mean, ways how you define your color. Uh, I mean, the uh, color of an image or uh, the pixel color. So this is an AB space type of thing. What I did is I instead of uh, say what I have to do is I have to find now. The question becomes, I mean, AB. This is what A is green to red component, B is blue to yellow component, and L is the lightness. I mean, I converted my RGB into ALB system. So a lightness value is, is what I already have. Now I have to find A and B out of lightness. But then again, I have to, to find two values. Now still, I want to confine it to one only. So what I did is I plotted this color map, which is you can see color space. I quantized it. Quantized means I basically decided only I, I I'm going to be only taking let's say two fifty five type of colors only. I'm not going to be taking every color in the in the universe. I quantized it, so I take. I said, okay, this is a single color. This is a single color. This is a single color. So I took around two fifty five colors out 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 of every value. Okay. So what I did is, I'm not going to be filling every color. I'll be just finding out this from the set of colors which I already know. So essentially, the problem becomes if you if I see the problem becomes you have lightness value, and out of that light lightness value, you have to classify that particular pixel into two fifty five classes. That essentially, let's say you have an image, you have to classify into cat or dog or different type of animals. You have something, you have to classify into two different things. Okay, right now over here, what the problem is? You have an lightness value, pixel value. You have to classify in which uh, color uh, category that particular pixel will fall. Now the question is, how you will classify? I mean, how my system would learn how uh, to to classify, uh, classify that? So the answer is uh, convolution neural networks. 
i cannot explain convolution neural networks to you at i mean at this stage uh, and and this scope because it takes a lot but still i can tell you like one thing uh, in cnn so cnn is more or like how my uh, eye works or how human eye works what i do is i uh, i have different type of cells in my eyes these cells try to learn different type of things some of my uh, cells in my eye learn learns the uh, horizontal lines some of uh, some of the uh, cells in my eyes try to learn the colors or see the colors some of the cells in my eyes try to see horizontal lines some of that try to learn a particular pattern try to learn circular shape so everything uh, i mean whatever each cell sees there are some cells which co coagulates that then there are some cells which try to make the whole a, a single picture out of it so that's how your scene and works okay so now what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be passing uh, so that's how it works i mean you have this particular filter you traverse your filter over an image like that and then each particular value in that particular fixer uh, pixel comes up to be uh, a single value so that's how you try to uh, regionalize every everything that is being there in the image so again i'm going to be using cnn for that so how cnn will work let's say i'm going to be passing a black and white image so cnn will see uh, for that pixel what is around that particular pixel and it will try to uh, check what is being learned from the previous images so let's say that's a pixel of mountain so cnn will get try to uh, get to learn that okay this pixel is of a mountain so it, it would be of a particular color color only okay so that's why it will give me the probability okay i am i'm kind of 95% sure that it should be brown in color or some kind of color uh, of of the mountain which which is there okay so that's how my cnn would work there are some additional steps which which could be in uh, shape i mean let's skip for now so essentially the problem is you have an image uh, you have an image there is a lot of images there is a lot of let's say colored images which i have i trained my convolution neural network on those images i parsed all the images and all the i mean black i converted those images into black and white and colored ones so i passed those that that sort of images and uh, my scene and net neural network learned the system like how uh, the pixel should be filled in colors uh, by uh, seeing what is around it and i have trained the model for you because training that kind of model will take will take days i mean even in where you have let's say 40 gpus i mean let's say i don't know how many of you are into gaming but uh, at a single tesla 2080 titan will take two months to uh, to train this particular model okay so let's say you have uh, 10 of them or maybe 15 20 of of uh, 2080 titan nvidia titan of 16 gb ram 20 of those kind of gpus it will take a week So, so I cannot train it for you right now. Of course, that doesn't make any sense. But I've already trained it in, in the college itself, where I got the resources. So what I can do is I can, I mean, tell you how basically how the outputs look looks like. Okay. So let me show it to you. I mean, uh, I have made a collab note, collab collaborative notebook for that, so that things will not, I mean, so that we can expedite the things. uh anyways let's say you want to check the code or whatever anything i mean of course i'll tell you the code like what is being the what is being there in the code but you can get everything from here so i've already created a uh yeah we'll be doing it in collab so she sorry i was not seeing the chat right now i just saw so here here is the link so i'll i'll tell you how you can do it in collab so first thing is uh you have to git clone the repository next thing is you will install the requirements with this command and you will make this get model so the point is you have to uh, upload the models over here i uploaded the models manually because i i didn't uh, saved it anywhere i mean this model is not being saved anywhere it's it's there with myself so that anyone cannot use it uh next thing what you can do is you can execute it okay so anyone who who would like to send any particular i mean would you like to share any particular image any particular black and white image which you want to color any particular scenery would work can you share with me any particular scenery or anything which you people want to color anyone
Mm, can't see your messages on any. Would you? I mean, any any specific image, or can can I use any image? Let's let's use any image. Maybe let's try to let's try and use this this image. We already talked talked about Swash Chandra Bose, so we can maybe use this image only. Swash Chandra Bose, great man. So it will be saved in desktop. I'm gonna be uploading it in my uh, system, the collab system. So first, I'm gonna be telling you how this. I mean, I'm gonna be giving giving you giving you any the demo of that, and then I'm gonna be explaining how it it is working. So let me upload this particular JPEG image. The samples. So it's there. SCB. I don't know how how it how it will work, but let me show it to you. And let, let's check. So I'm gonna be also using it from the first time on the first phone. Too. So it is SCB dot JPG. So it has been the saved in scb underscore color dot png. Let me see if it has been saved or not. Yep, here it is. Let Let's download it and view. Mm, okay. How does works? <laughs> is it good? I hope it's good. No, it's not that bad. I I thought of it would be it would be it go, it's gonna be bad, but it's, it's kind of good. No, <laughs> it's it's good. So I'll tell you. I mean, this this military so uh, military uniform is not not that much in data. So in military images you don't get that much. So this, this that's why this color in this person is kind of low. But Subhash sir, some color. The grass colors and the colors of the trees are kind of, and even the sky is very good. So I'll tell you like how this thing is happening. Let me open the main file over here. How the stuff. So anyone who would like to, and I'll, I'll share my details after this class. Maybe you can connect me in case anyone. I mean, that's uh, that's a genuine question. So anyone who would like to uh, discuss about any any research stuff around the coloring images, we can we can get get a word. So yep. What I'm doing is I'm gonna be I'm importing all the libraries which is being required. Next thing is I'm I'm writing a parser. Parser is nothing but right now I'm passing this image, no, this as an input. So this helps me to take the input, this parser thing. Next is uh, I have all the model files which I uh, which I've trained. I'm opening that particular image. So this CV computer vision library it 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 will open the image for me. Next thing is I, I open my machine learning model. I open all the libraries. I get the layers which is being required. This is my uh, weight and height ratio of that particular image. Now I convert. If you see, I convert my RGB image into lab image. So lab image, I'm I'm converting my RGB into C A B N L A B L type format. Okay. So right right now I'm changing the I'm reshaping my image. Next thing would be I'm 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 passing I'll be doing forward pass. So if you'll see this is this is what we would I say forward. So forward is like I have this function. Uh oh, I'm passing the image in this function and and getting an output from this function. So this is what what essentially I say the forward pass is. After getting that image from the forward pass, I'll try to I'll make that image. Uh, I mean I'll make it back get back into blue green and red system. I mean, converting the output again into what is being required. Next thing would be I'm, I'm I'll be saving that particular image. So that's how this particular code stuff works. So if you if uh, I mean if we can say do one thing, any any particular uh, one any anyone any any one one more image which 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 could which can be done. Anyone? Okay, if if that's a no, I mean hill scenery. Okay, okay. If in case you want to go with hill scenery, I have a lot of hill sceneries. I mean, 
I'm so I skipped that in my introduction, but I love riding bikes. So I'm gonna have a bike and I, I ride a lot. So and and I travel frequently. So I have a lot of hill sceneries with me. One of is which which is here. But again, I had to convert into black and white. So that that that's a problem. But anyways, I mean, okay, I can do it. I'll open it in color sync utility and try to convert that into black and white for now. Oh. Mm. Damn, I have to do it in Photoshop. So okay, let let's reframe for now and search it. We see black and white. Uh oh, this can be done. This is this is a desert. Okay, this is a good scene, you know. But it will not show me, you no. Know? It's a. This is a. I think. Uh, when all these image. Uh oh. I should search mountains or maybe high stock photo. Okay, this this can be done. I'm gonna be saving as hills. Uploading that in my system. Okay, here, here, here's the hills. And I'll pass hills here. So I'll write hills. JPEG. Let's try to execute and check the output. Mm, okay, image is being saved. I mean, you can also color the videos also. Yes, I love tracking, tricking. I've tricked a lot. I mean, Kareri, Thrion, Kuspiti. Not sure how many of you know, how many people. Okay, that, that's going to look good, no? How's it, folks? I I think it, it looks looks good, no? I and mean, that's that was the actual, and this is feels good, feels good. Anyway, and anyhow. Okay, I think I think that that would I think I would I would sum up here. So, so that's how you can color images. So there is this is just just. So in black and white images, RG value, RGB values are same. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in output, the CNN is predicting what should be the, uh, so that that's what I discussed over here, no, over here. So I had that single per pixel value, which is lightness. I'm predicting AB values here. I'm predicting the, technically, if you, if you just forget about it from L values, I'm trying to uh, get what is RGB value from that single value that is being uh, done by the CNN. So I think that I would, I can maybe wind up.